He gave me the light, I'm gonna let it shine. He gave me the light, I'm gonna let it shine. He gave me the light. I'm gonna grace, let it mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Uh, this past week, as we said in announcements, you may have uh, noticed that our church was featured on the news a lot. Uh, the, an article in the Columbus Dispatch, radio mentions on WNCI 104.9 The River, 92.3 WCOL, 610 uh, WOSU NPR, Sunny 95, and all the major television stations, NBC4, ABC6, 10TV, and Fox 28, were all here to report on our Ash Wednesday service that we had from 11 to 1 that was held out in our parking lot. We called it Drive Up Ashes. We invited people to stay in their cars, and we explained that this is the season of Lent, and the season starts and ends with the cross. We explained how ashes are a biblical sign of repenting, that is, turning our hearts back to God. And those ashes that remind us of that are also traced in the form of a cross on our foreheads, a symbol, a sign of our forgiveness and hope made possible by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We prayed a prayer that I wrote that was printed on the back of a business card that would hopefully remind them of a prayer and know that they are welcome to join us here. We had over 70 cars come up that day, some with one person, many with a car load full. And again, my sincere thanks to our staff and pastors Beth and Grant who helped and came uh, to help with this ministry. I can tell you that there were many tears and many times of laughter. There was gratitude and deep appreciation. It was a time that was full of signs and symbols and the promise of presence of God. I will also tell you that I have, uh, this, this summer will mark 10 years of me having ordained ministry uh, in the church and it was one of those moments um, that I will never, ever, ever forget. It was, it was a profound experience. The promise of where two or three are gathered, there I'll be, Jesus says, was fulfilled. The promise and presence of God was truly there. How do I know? Well, how do all, any of us know uh, when we have the presence of God really among us? I share the story with you uh, from Pastor Beth up at Lord of Life Lutheran Church who shared this with our bishop over email. Pastor Beth says this, as we met people, we asked them what brought them here. One of the cars had two men, a father and an adult son. And when I asked them what brought them here, there was a moment of hesitation before the father answered that his son had just come from the hospital from a round of chemo. He has cancer, he said. Fragile health would keep him from being surrounded by others in worship like this. If that were the only story like that, and it wasn't, then what we offered that day was more than worth the time and the cold. This Lenten season starts off with signs and symbols and presence. And our Old Testament lesson from today, taken from Genesis 9, it's a familiar story to many of us. Uh, I don't even think you have to be Christian or Jewish to know the story of Noah and the ark. I mean, after all, you could just watch Evan Almighty and kind of get something there. Hopefully you didn't buy into all the Russell Crowism of the last uh, year when his story, Noah. But basically, the story of Noah is this. Uh, the story tells us how the people of the earth became so evil that there was only one righteous man and his family, which consisted of his wife, his three sons, and their wives. And they were to be saved from total annihilation. God made a promise to Noah that if Noah built an ark, God would bring two of each clean animal to the ark. And when God flooded the earth to destroy everything and everyone by making it rain for 40 days and 40 nights, those animals and Noah and his family would be safe from death and destruction. Noah did as God commanded, and God kept his promise. Today, our Old Testament scripture takes us to the end of this story. We hear about how God's wrath has ended, how the waters have receded, and the ark sets down on dry land, and how God's commitment to humans is restored once again. We hear that God's promise is to never 
destroy all of creation by water. We hear how God gives us a sign and a symbol and a promise of presence. The sign is the, sim- is the rainbow that's placed in the sky. And it's a sign that does not discriminate, as it includes all colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. A sign that we see in common things like when water combines with the sky. A sign that is symbolic. A sign that the rainbow is a symbol representing God's promise to us that God will never again destroy the whole earth by a flood. And the rainbow is a reminder of God's presence with us. A reminder that God keeps his word. A promise that we are forgiven and loved. Many times I think... um, people associate the season of Lent uh, with giving something up. I mean, when you think of season of Lent, what is the first thing you think of? Hopefully, it's Jesus Christ. But I think a lot of people think, oh, what am I going to give up this year? What am I going to take on, perhaps? Because some people take on something rather than give something up. It is the se- it's as if the season of Lent is like a second chance on those New Year's resolutions that perhaps we gave up around Super Bowl Sunday or before. Many treat this, kind of, this season as a kind of second chance for those resolutions. Is anybody giving up anything for Lent? I'm just curious. Yeah? Got a cup? Oh, I got some head. You guys are such Lutherans. My goodness, speak up. Um, all right, what is one thing that you're giving up for Lent? Somebody tell me. Ru- <laughs> B-dubs is right down the road, Dad. There you go. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Brewster's, okay. That's, that's a good one, actually. Yeah. Candy? Oh, wow, that's a good one. Yeah, anybody else giving up anything? Anybody taking anything on for Lent? Yeah, like a workout or reading the Bible every day, praying every day, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. No? Okay, well, there's some suggestions. It's not too late. <laughs> I, um, I do find it kind of ironic that the distribution of Girl Scout cookies coincides with the beginning of Lent. I'm just saying. But Lent should be more associated with walking from Jesus on the top, mountaintop of transfiguration, down into the valley, the Lenten road to the foot of the cross, rather than simply giving things up. Don't get me wrong. Giving things up, like candy and roosters, is an important discipline in Lent. It serves as a reminder of how much Christ sacrificed, how much God gave up for our redemption. But what we choose to give up should go deeper should have a deeper thought than perhaps what we were thinking about with New Year's resolutions. What we give up should be anything, anything that serves as a barrier between us and our relationship with God. Like the rainbow, like the ashes drawn on your forehead just a few days ago, what we give up for Lent should be a sign, a symbol, a reminder of God's presence in our lives. Nadia Bowles Weber is a Lutheran pastor out in Colorado, and she wrote this about the season of Lent. She says, Ash Wednesday is my favorite day in the church year, and Lent is my favorite season. But oddly, nobody waits every year to watch the Ash Wednesday Charlie Brown special. There are no doorbuster sales at 4 a.m. on the first day of Lent. There are no big garnish displays in the middle of the mall with mechanical children sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Nope. We get this season all to ourselves. A Our culture has no idea what to do with a day and a season that celebrates the fact that we are all great sinners in need of a great Savior. I love to talk about sin, she says, but there are some who equate admitting we are sinful with having low self-esteem. There are others who equate sin with immorality. So on the one end, the church tells us that sin is an antiquated notion that makes us feel bad about ourselves, so we should avoid mentioning it. And on the other hand, the church tells us that sin is the same time immorality and is totally avoidable if you just live a squeaky clean Christian life. But when sin is boiled down to low self-esteem and immorality, then it becomes something we can control. And we can limit in some way rather than something we are in bondage to. The reality is, is that we are all sinners in need of a great Savior. And we are in bondage to sin. And we cannot free ourselves. 
I cannot keep from being turned in on self. I cannot, by my own understanding and effort, disentangle myself from self-interest when I think I can. I'm trying to do what is only God's to do. To me, she says, there is actually great hope in admitting my morality and brokenness because when I finally lay aside my sin management program and allow God to be God for me, which is all any of us really need when it comes down to it. This Lenten season serves as a reminder for us to focus on God. Like the rainbow is made through water and sky, how the rainbow serves as a sign, a symbol, a promise of God's presence. What we give up or take on this Lenten season should point us to God's love, God's sacrifice, God's love and grace and forgiveness and promise of life, everlasting life, which doesn't start when we die. It starts today when we have a relationship through Jesus Christ with God. Many of us look at this season as something to be endured, a marathon of self-inflicted torture that zaps all the fun out of life. Until we get to Easter when we can return to, well, normal. When we can drink all the pop we want, eat all the roosters that we want, eat all the chocolate that we want. Again, right? How many of you, when you do give up something for Lent, as soon as Easter comes around, you're eating it. You're drinking it. Don't lie, you're in church. <laughs> Shake your head, you know, it's true. But returning to normal, guys, that isn't the point of Lent. The point of Lent is change. The point of Lent is a time to examine ourselves, our hearts, our habits, our hopes of turning from our way of doing things instead of doing the way Yahweh would have us to do them. We focus on our need for God instead of self. There is evilness, evil in the world and brokenness in the world and things aren't the way they're supposed to be. What God gives us in Jesus Christ is a Savior who knows what it's like to be tempted. Who knows what it's like to face those evils and win. To win the battle so we would have someone who walks with us every single day. Who knows what it's like to face those battles that we face in life. We have a Savior who comes to us to forgive us, to touch our hearts and our lives and to welcome us into his loving arms so that we might receive God's gift. So as we walk throughout the gift of this upcoming week, whatever this week may bring, may we walk with a new awareness of the signs and symbols of God's presence with us and sacrifice whatever it is that we're giving up or taking on in Lent. May we recall Jesus taking on our sin and God giving us his own son so that we may be forgiven and live eternally. With God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine.